welcome, welcome everyone. I am so glad you guys are here today. Uh, if we have not met, I would love to meet you. My name is Dominic uh, Insignia, so I'm leader here at the Heart Church Community. And um, you are in a place that was designed, that was created, that was prayed over, that was worked on for you. And when I say for you, what I mean is, is we want to have a place that is welcoming, a place where you can feel like you can just be yourself. So if you uh, start to feel awkward, I want to invite you to not feel that way, um, that it's, you're in a place where you can just be who you are, that it's okay to be who you are. Um, it's okay to be where you are in life. Because this is a place where we can figure out more about God. This is a place where we can come to meet God, to understand the things of God, and to talk about it together in a safe place where we're all trying to get to the same thing. So if you haven't been here uh, before, I am very grateful that you are here today, and, um, and welcome. Um, I want to start off by saying that we have uh, something important today. If, you, if it's your first time here, or you... Um, first couple of weeks or whatever, I want to strongly invite you to what we have starting here today at 1130 called Heartbeat. Um, this is kind of like a getting to know you for us, right? So if you uh, are new to Christianity even, uh, if you've just met Jesus pretty recently in the last couple of months or so, um, or uh, you're new to the heart, you've been here the last couple of months, and you wish you could know more about us, Heartbeat starts today at 1130, and it's over the next four weeks, okay? Um, so it starts today at 1130, it's about an hour, and you get to know more about us as a church, how we do things, the way we think uh, about ministry, about people, about life, about community. Uh, so you get to know more, uh, more about that, kind of the history of the church, kind of walk through what we feel are the essentials to a relationship with Jesus and how you can grow in that, grow in this journey with Jesus. Jesus. Uh, so that's over the next four weeks, and, and hopefully the, the goal is to help you find a place where you fit inside of the heart, because most of us feel like, well, that's great what you guys are doing, but I'm, I don't have time during Sunday, or I can't do anything during the week, or I don't know how I could possibly help. Looks like you've got everything covered. Um, and Heartbeat is a great way to figure out what is the next step you can take, whether that's baptism, whether that's starting a relationship with Jesus, whether that's serving, whether that's giving, whether that's a reading plan, whatever it is, Heartbeat is a great way to figure out what is next for you and your relationship and your journey with Jesus. Um, before we before we get going, um, I we, we're the kind of church where we want you to have your phones out or your tablets or your you know iPads or Android devices or what have you, and uh, we want you to download this app called the Bible app. Um, you can search for our in all the all the app stores. We have all the app stores, and once you download that, you're, I want you to sign up or do your thing, and you're going to go to events. Now, in, when you're in events, okay, in this app. Events is going to, you're going to be able to follow along everything we talk about today. So it's going to, all the scriptures I'm going to talk about today, it's going to be in there. All of the uh, references we have when we talk about connect groups, when we talk about giving, all of that stuff is in events. And you'll be able to take notes in there, save it for future reference, blah, blah, blah. So we want to encourage you to, uh, to do that, to be a part of what you're doing. Now, if you have good old-fashioned Bible uh, paper, then, uh, you know, tip of the hat to you, bonus points. Uh, we'll get you a gold star on the way out. Um, but you can, if you, if you don't have a Bible with you, it's no worries because we're going to have it up here and we have uh, the event that you can have on your phone, okay? Um, if you have not been with us over the last couple of weeks, um, then uh, no problem, you can catch up on podcasts. But we have been in the middle of this incredible message series called Divine Direction. Uh, here at the heart, the way, we, the way we do things, the way we uh, uh, craft our messages, is it's usually within a collection of talks, right? So about four or five weeks, we'll kind of stay on the topic or on a scripture, and we'll kind of dig into that and see uh, what God has to say about these particular topics and throughout the word. And this one, Divine Direction, has been incredible. Uh, it was inspired by a book that was written by a man named Craig Rochelle, and we have the books for sale in the back. If you don't have one yet, uh, you can go buy one at the end of the main experience, uh, only $5. Uh, that's not for us. That's, that's how much they cost. So I'm um, not trying to plug our uh, little Connect store, our little library over there. Um, and even if I was, so what? You got a problem with that? Uh, <laughs> and this, this series has been incredible because the whole point of it is we want to figure out the first week we asked an important question, and that question was not what does God want us to do? So often we want to know what we're supposed to do, right? What am I supposed to do with my life? But the question we really want to ask is who am I supposed to be? Because what we find out as we read the word is God cares very little about what you do and so much about who you are. Because you can be who you are in any situation, whether you're in this job or the next job you're going to have, the job you were before. Are you being who God wants you to be in any of these jobs, in any of these schools you go to, in any of these cities you're going to move to? 
Who you are carries with you through all of that. So whether you are a manager or the supervisor or the CEO, who you are is, gonna re is really most important to God, and really it's most important to those around you. It determines the people you influence and the type of influence that you have. It's not your position. It's who you are. So that was the foundation that we tried to lay. And then the next week, we wanted to get a little practical and say, okay, well, that's great, but I still need to make decisions, right? All of this revolves around decisions. We're making decisions every day, so we want to know how can we make decisions. Well, the best way to make decisions is to ask for wisdom. The wisest thing you can do is to ask for wisdom, and we ask wisdom from God. God is generous. He is generous to give wisdom to us, to give us the things that we need to make the decisions that we need to make. Very, very few times will God write out in the clouds and tell you exactly the decision you're supposed to make. Very rarely will he say, he'll, he'll say out loud yes to whatever you're asking or no to whatever you're asking. Most often, he will give you the wisdom to make the decision that you need to make in your life, whether it be a relationship, a job, moving, school whatever it happens to be, what phone you should buy coming up in the fall. Whatever decision you need to make, you can ask for the wisdom to make that decision. And then last week, week three, we kind of hit on, we took it a little step further, and we wanted to know, okay, so if we're going to take this next step, if we're going to go forward, how are we supposed to be able to start trusting God? And one of those things is we talked about faith, faith being the beginning of trust right? Or maybe even step, take a step further back, doubt being the beginning. Doubting God, doubting what you're supposed to do, and that leading to faith. Because when you doubt, you create room for faith. In fact, I would say the more you doubt, the bigger struggles you have, the more frustrated you are, that creates even more room for God to show up and be even bigger in your life, to have even bigger faith in your life. So we want to trust God with our next step. And today, I want to give us a step to take because part of the, part of the concept of, uh, of divine direction is one of the things that we, we, we've talked about that gives us a hard time is there's so, many, there's so many options. And when there's so many options, it kind of gives us a, a paralysis, right? We, uh, we mentioned a couple weeks ago, but you ever jump, on, jump in front of the TV and you put on Netflix and you take like 25 minutes searching for what to watch? Because there's so many options, you don't want to miss any kind of movie or, oh, that, what, are we feeling a comedy? Or are we feeling an action or an action adventure or a drama? Anybody ever, you know, sit in front of the, sit in front of the Netflix for that long and you wish you could just, you know, but, but when you're going through the channels, when you're flipping through TV, does anybody have cable anymore? Is that a thing? You antiquated people who have cable? You're flipping through the channels and you see, and you, and you see a movie on that you own and you're like, hey, I'll watch it. It's like you own the movie, but you'll watch it on cable with commercials and everything. What is that about us? Because we don't have to make the decision to put it in the DVD player or Blu-ray or whatever the technology is now. Or buy it on iTunes, or I don't know, or Google Play Store. I always feel like I have to plug Android for Matt, <laughs> otherwise I get a hard time. Okay. <laughs> Google Play, still the thing. We have so many options, there's so many things to do. I know, that, I know that I personally love the options, though, because when I go to Netflix, it, it, maybe you guys, uh, I know some of you guys are sharing your password with like eight different people <laughs> for Netflix, but um, okay, um, gotcha. On Netflix, when you, go, when you turn on Netflix, you don't just look at movies, right? You have to select, well, who's watching Netflix? Well, it's me. It's Dominic. So Netflix says, okay, Dominic, here's all the movies that we think you'll like. I'm like, well, I appreciate that. And then I'll go to Hulu. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you put your name in, okay? So, in, so if you don't know, in Netflix, you can like put like profiles. Like this is Dominic, and this is what Amber watches, and this is what Paige watches, and this is what Corbin watches, and if we have kids over, this is what kids watch. You can have different profiles. Same thing in Hulu. You have different profiles. These are shows that Dominic watches. Well, thank you very much. I don't want to have to scroll through all of Paige's shows to see my shows. I don't have to scroll through all of Amber's shows to see what I want to watch. I want what I want to watch up front. Spotify, I turn on Spotify, and it's like, Dominic, here's, here's songs that we recommend for you. Have a good day. Thanks very much. Amazon. Anybody hear that Amazon bought Whole Foods this past week? Only the biggest sale in the history of sales. Billions of dollars. And I was excited about that selfishly, personally, because I love Amazon, and I love Whole Foods, and I'll be able to get it shipped prime. Two days. Love that. Why do I love that? Why do we love that? We're so it's all for us. <laughs> Your entire world is centered around you. It's you. You're the most important. And we love it, don't we? 
We love it. We love that it's centered around us. We go somewhere and we have this bad service. We're like, I should not be treated this way. How dare they? I am a customer at Whataburger. I will not be treated this way. Can you say to ma- can you send a maid to clean up this table? I will not wipe my own table. Right? Why, why, why do we get that way? This world has has like has has been created to be centered around us. We we want the best customer service no matter where we are. And we've had companies like uh, Zappos. Is that the the shoe company? Companies like Zappos and like just really change the game in customer service and. Companies like uh, Amazon, right? They, they change the game. Like, you don't like what you got? No problem. Send it back. Free shipping. I, they're, they're starting this new thing, Amazon, where you can get a bunch of clothes. They send them to you free. Try them on. If you like them, you buy them. You get a discount if you buy them all, and then you send it back free. Just changing the game in customer service. So what we, 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 we tend to get, we're like, we, we, we get used to that. And if we don't get that, then we're like, hey, hey, I'm an American, Okay. I expect a certain level of customer service. We expect a certain level of, well, what's in it for me? What is this company going to do for me? How is this going to help me? And I thought that. I thought that with, with Amazon and Whole Foods. I'm like, hmm, how is that good for me? I didn't think about the employees of the companies or how they would like it or <laughs> what that does to the rest of the economic system. I don't care about that. <laughs> I just care about what that's going to mean for me. And Maybe, and maybe, maybe you've experienced that in your life, you know, with, you, you look at these things and you, uh, and, and, and I mean kind of tongue in cheek, right, as far as like, you know, being frustrated, but there are some times where like, you, there is a certain level of a customer service that you expect. There's a certain level of like, well, I want this, so I'm going to ask for it and I should get it. And if I don't get it, I'm going to talk to the managers. Anybody that talk to the manager kind of people, don't raise your hands. Because <laughs> all the... All the, stir- all the servers and the wait staff and all the people in customer service are eyeballing you. I'm going to talk to the manager to get what I want. But is there anything wrong with that? I'm not telling you there's anything wrong with that. I'm telling you the world we live in, that's what's been created. Now, what is dangerous, what is dangerous, what can be dangerous, is when we take that same thinking, this thinking of the world has been designed around me. The world has been created to function for me. When we take that same thinking and we bring it in here. We look at a, we look at a church, and maybe, maybe some of you are visiting churches, and you think, well, this church, I, I like this about this church, but I don't like that about this church. Or you came to the heart, and you're like, the, the, the singing is great, speaking, not so much. Amber's amazing, Dominic married up, am I right? It's hurtful that you enjoyed that. (laughs) Slightly hurtful. But we can look at it, we can look at it and say, well, that doesn't really meet my needs. This, This church doesn't really do what I want it to do for me. And nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from what we see Jesus teach about what we're supposed to do as followers of Jesus. Now, we're selfish. We're selfish people. Or maybe you're not. Okay, I won't lump you in yet. I am completely selfish. In fact, um, I love, I, I, haven't been, I haven't been eating sugar for about, this is about eight months, sorry to brag. Um, but I used to have like a major sweet tooth, just like strong, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, even like after breakfast, I'm like, what's for dessert, <laughs> you know? Uh, sweet tooth was strong, and I, you know, I had to get it out of my life. So I, I stopped eating um, uh, sugar, and uh, I don't know if it's a replacement. It probably is a replacement, but I started eating apples and peanut butter. Anybody found this gem, apples and peanut butter? Okay. Um, so if you haven't had it, it's going to rock your world. It's uh, the H-E-B, green peanut butter, green lid, uh, Fuji apples. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm not, it's not a paid advertisement for H-E-B. And I, I love me some apples and peanut butter. So I cut the apple, I cut the apple slices, and I, I'm like an animal. I just open the lid of the peanut butter I'm scooping out of there. You know what I mean? Like I don't even spoon, you know, on a plate or anything like that. Um, and, I, and, I, and I love it. Well, my wife enjoys it too. Um, sometimes Corbin will get down with it. But this past week, I was just, 
you know, you judge me, whatever. I'm just going to tell you about how selfish I am. Um, I think I would like some apples and peanut butter. And it's the last apple. Do you think I care that it's the last apple? Do you think I offer to make any, to share the apple with anyone? No, not at all. I cut that apple up. And, and, I, and I, I think about it now. And looking back on it, I think, man, that was horrible, and it, I must have planned that. But we're all watching TV, and I go to the kitchen, like a rat. I go to the kitchen, and I, I slice up these apples, okay, get the peanut butter. And I, I don't know if I'm doing it quietly to not disturb them from the movie or if I'm doing it quietly so nobody knows that I'm getting apples and peanut butter. I, I'm just trying to walk you through where my psyche is at, okay? So, uh, I mean, I'm like over halfway deep into this apple, and just, you know, peanut butter dripping off the beard. You know what I mean? And Amber turns around, and she's like, hey, what are you eating? And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, do you want the rest? And by the rest, I mean these last two slices of apple. It's the last apple in the house. And, um, you know, and you can judge me. That's okay. That's how selfish I am. This happened this week. This wasn't like a couple of years ago, you know, before I met Jesus. <laughs> This was, this was last week. We're in the middle of divine direction. We're in the middle of trying to figure out who God wants us to be. And I'm like, you know, just <laughs> a couple of days ago. Now, maybe you're not as selfish as me, okay? Granted, maybe you really do great about thinking of others first, and that's fantastic. Good for you. Brag. Why don't you brag about it? My point is, is that there are things about us humans, the human condition, that are natural, natural to do, right? It is very natural for us to be selfish. It's natural for us to think of ourselves first. It is unnatural to think of others. It is unnatural to, to not be selfish. And what we see is that a perfect antidote to selfishness is serving. It's to serve. Now, I want to Look at 1 Peter, and if you have your Bibles, you can flip there. 1 Peter, it's towards the way, way back. Um, in, in this book of 1 Peter, now, uh, if you don't know much about the Bible, um, there's 1 Peter, 2 Peter, and 3 Peter, and these are letters, okay? We call them books. Each, each section in the Bible is called a book, okay? The book, so if somebody says the book of 1 Peter, that's what they mean is that section, and these are actually letters that were written by Peter. And if uh, you might know Peter, Peter was the one that walked on water with Jesus, okay? Peter's the one that he was like, uh, Jesus, or he denied Jesus. Remember, the, he's the one that denied Jesus three, three times. He's the one that told Jesus, Jesus, you shouldn't die. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, talking to Peter. And, you know, Peter's world was crushed. Pe that's Peter, okay? So pe after Jesus dies, Peter goes on to be an amazing, amazing man of God and leads so many people to a relationship with Jesus and changes lives. And these letters, what we get to see here is these are letters that he wrote to people, Christians, believers that were scattered around the world, right? And 1 Peter, this one we're going to look at, 1 Peter, he was writing this letter to Jesus followers who were non-Jewish, okay, which is us, all of us in here, unless, unless you were Jewish, um, then it's to all of us, people like us who were scattered on the world, who were, who, were, who were confused. He was writing to people who were Roman citizens, but also believers, and that was a difficult thing to be. And he was trying to explain to them that it doesn't matter what you do, it's who you are, right? Because he would tell them things like, if, if you're a slave in a Roman's home, well, don't show them you're a Christian by rebelling against their rules. Show them you're a Christian by serving them from the heart. By showing them grace and love and mercy. That's how we share about who we are. Not by being a, being a rebel and saying, I can't do what you say because I believe in Jesus. I can't, I can't listen to what you're saying about your God because I believe in my God. Arguing rebellion is not the way he recommended talking to others about your faith. So, so this, is, this, is the, this is the theme, this is the vibe of the letter that he's writing to these people. And he, uh, I, I want to pick up on a little bit, um, this is in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, and in this particular section, he wants to give them some advice about living for God, okay? 
You want, you want to make sure you're living for God, that you're doing things for God and for the glory of God and through Jesus. And, and don't, you know, re- lean on your own power, lean on Jesus' power, and you have that available, so use it, so do it. So I want to look at 1 Peter 4, 10, and then we'll hit 11 in a sec, but 1 Peter 4, 10. He's telling them, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So he's not writing this letter to a bunch of pastors, okay? He's not writing this letter to a bunch of church elders who have been qualified to do ministry or whatever it is. He's writing this letter to everyone who believes. This is the kind of letter that was, it wasn't just one letter to one church. It was a letter that was like scattered and sent to a bunch of different groups of believers, a bunch of different communities, something similar to ours. And he's writing this to encourage us how to live for God. And he's telling us that we each have a gift. Not just the spiritual people, everyone has a gift. Everyone has a gift that they have been given from God. And we're supposed to use them well to serve one another. Now let's continue on, verse 11, the very next verse. If you have the gift of speaking, speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring, bring glory bling, bring glory to God through Jesus Christ, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. That's not even the end of the thing. He just wanted to say amen there. That's how powerful that was. Gift of speaking, does that seem like a spiritual gift to you? Can you talk? <laughs> Introverts are like, nope. That is not my gift. Do you have the gift of helping? Do you ever think a spiritual gift of helping is a gift? Do you ever see that as a gift? Like, well, just, why wouldn't you just help people? You just help people. Well, what we're seeing is those are gifts. Those are gifts given from God to be used to serve one another. Now, this goes against our society, right? This goes against this world that we live in. Because the world that we live in says, live for yourself. Do what feels right. Look out for number one. Get what you need. Put your mask on first before you help, well, do that in the airplane. You know what I mean. Society says you are most important. What we're hearing here is others are most important. Society says, use what you got, your gifts, your talents, your skills. You hoard that, and you do whatever you can to be successful in your life. If you're great with money, then you make a bunch of money, and you be rich, and you be wealthy, and you just do whatever you want. And this is saying, man, if you got a bunch of money, help others. Share that. Spread that. Share that knowledge. You're great at business? Help others start businesses. You're great at talking? Talk as though God is speaking through you. You do these things for Jesus because of Jesus, to God, and everything, and all of that, God is glorified through. But that's not the world we live in. We live in a selfish world. We live in a world where you cut up an apple for yourself, selfish people, and eat it by yourself in the kitchen so nobody can see you. That's the kind of world we're living in, or at least I'm living in. So how can we do that? How can we go from this this Netflix, Spotify, Stitch Fix, Hulu world that is designed for us, and how can we turn that around and say, okay, well, I'm supposed to live for others. And the key is serving. Now, there's a difference between serving as a server and serving as a servant, right? A server is something that you do. If you're a server, that's something that you do. But if you're a servant, that's someone that you are. And we were created to serve one another. Now that word, that word is tricky because servant can almost feel like slavery. And that's, that's our fault. We have created that, mankind. We have created that word to mean that. But you can do things for people in a servant type way. You ever heard the term servant leadership? It's a type of leadership that is for you to succeed. It doesn't direct you or tell you what to do. And when we look at Matthew, we're going to look at the book of Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector, and he was one of the bros. 
that follow Jesus around. Matthew 20, 28, we're going, to look at, we're going to look at a section where Jesus is talking to his disciples, okay? So from the horse's mouth, Jesus is talking to his disciples about what it means to serve, what it means to serve others. Why would, why would, why would a God, why would a God who deserves all glory, deserves all honor, deserves everything, why would he send his son as a servant to mankind? Why would he do that? They're so, that's so confusing because that's not how we look at kings or princes. That's not how we look at people who are in charge, the, the, the president, the CEO. We don't, we, don't, we don't see that as like we or they serve us. We see it as we serve them. You watch an old movie where there's a king or a queen or whatever. You don't think, well, that king must serve his people. No, you think the people are servants of the king. That's not the way God does it. That's not the way God's kingdom works. It's the other way around. He sent Jesus to serve all. And it turned the world upside down. So, we're, so Jesus is talking about, I'm going I'm to jump a little bit before the verse that we're going to be at. These guys, there was, there was a couple of guys that wanted to be important to Jesus. And they said, Jesus, we want to sit at your right hand when, you, when you're with God. We want to be the most important people in your life. And in verse 24, it says, when the ten disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant, but Jesus called them together, and he said this. So check this out. You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, their officials, and they flaunt authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Among you, among the people who follow Jesus. Now, if you are not a follower of Jesus and you don't like the way this sounds, then you're in good shape. (laughs) Then you're not, this isn't part of the path that you were on. But if you have made a decision for Jesus, if you have given your life to Jesus, if you have let Jesus replace you when it comes to what you owe God, and now you're scot-free, you're clear, then this is part of how we're meant to lead as followers. It says, among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus himself came to serve. And if anyone deserved everything, it was Jesus. But he came to serve because he wanted to show us what it meant. When we can choose to step outside of ourselves. See, the antidote for selfishness is to serve. Now, you can serve, and you can do stuff, and you can go volunteer and walk dogs and clean out kennels and whatever volunteer opportunities they are, and that's great. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's everything right with that. But, if, but that's just the action. And what we've learned is that it doesn't matter what you do. It matters who you are. Who are you becoming? So more than, more than I want you to serve I, more than I want us to be people who do things, I want us to be people who are becoming servants, who do things with a servant's heart. Because if you do something and you're doing it to relieve someone's anxiety, then you're not helping anything. But if you do something and you do it because you want to help, because you're doing it from your heart, then that changes everything. Now, there's somebody uh, in my life that I want to tell you a story about, but before I tell you that story, I want to show uh, I want to show a video. Now, a couple of weeks uh, ago, we we showed a video. It was a it was uh, we're calling it my story, and we showed Amber's uh, story. Today, we're going to share uh, Paige's story, and I, so I want to I want to direct your attention to this video, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, about that afterwards. Hey, good job, Paige. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I asked Paige this week if I could. If I could share something about her uh, today, and um, and she said yes. Um, Paige, uh, she mentioned a little bit on the video, but about a year and a half ago is when we, you know, we started this whole train rolling um, for the heart. And Paige, like she said, she would show up every now and then, and it was, you know, it was helpful when she showed up, and um, uh, sometimes she couldn't make it, and, and that was okay. She would she would serve when she could. And I, I don't know, it was a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, there was something that, that, shifted, uh, that shifted in Paige. And it wasn't necessarily the actions that she was taking, it was 
the way she started to think about things, the way she started to talk about the heart. And when an opportunity came up for her to do all this, all the visuals that you see, they're all Paige. They're all her inspiration. And I, I was telling Paige that I feel like she shifted from being someone who serves to being a servant. Because you can serve and, and you can do things and that's what you do. But when you shift to go outside of yourself, because these slides, I mean, you should see there are evenings in a row where Paige gets home from work and she'll have something to eat and she'll sit in front of the computer for hours, hours, trying to create slides for one song, trying to make it to where the, the visuals bring out what the song is trying to say. And I've never asked her to spend a bunch of time. I've never asked her to do to go outside of her normal time, to spend all evening, to spend her weekends, but something that she's made the choice to do. And I'm not saying you need to do the same thing. I'm not saying you need to do anything. What I'm saying is that we live in this world, and it's going to be a constant, constant barrage of things that are for us, temptations for us to be selfish, and the way we fight that, the way we go against selfishness is to be outside of ourselves, is to serve, is to do something. Now today we are, we're doing Heartbeat, I mentioned that at the beginning, we're doing Heartbeat today at 1130, and Heartbeat is an amazing way, a great way to figure out where, what you can do, how you can be a part of what God is doing. Now I have to say that none of this is some sort of like you are not obligated to do anything. Same thing when we talk about giving, when you talk about praying, reading the Bible, raising your hands to worship, none of that. There is no obligation in any of this. It is simply an invitation to take a next step. And if you don't know what a next step is towards a relationship with Jesus, this might be it. It might be worth looking into. But it's got to be up to you. It's got to be what you choose to do. What I want you to do, if you guys could close your eyes and bow your heads for me. I want to pray, and I want to, I want to, before I pray, I want to ask you guys, I want to ask you guys to get real with yourself. See, because when we look at someone like Jesus, Jesus came to serve, and by serving, what he did is he gave up his life. He gave up his life so that we could have new life. And I want to give you guys an opportunity. Maybe, uh, maybe you haven't taken that opportunity before. Maybe you didn't know that Jesus came to serve, and in that he gave up his life for you, for you to be connected with the Father. Father maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you did know that, and you have known that, and you just, you've kind of stepped away. You've forgotten what that means. You've forgotten to, to rely on God when you're supposed to. You've forgotten to rely on God, and you've been relying on yourself, and you've been relying on your friends, and you've been relying on your parents, but you haven't been relying on God. So I want to give you a chance today, an opportunity to start fresh, to start new. That is what is amazing about Jesus Christ. That is what amazing about what God has done is we can start new. We can always, no matter where we are, take a step towards God. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to have your eyes closed. I don't want anybody looking around, not looking at your neighbor, not looking at your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife. Just you and God. I want to give you an opportunity to start new in your relationship with God today, whether it's for the first time or for the first time in a long time. And if you want to take that opportunity today, you want to start new with God today, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand with all everybody's eyes closed, everybody heads down, I want you to raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Put your hand up right now. What that hand up means is you're saying, God, I want to start new today. I want to start new in my relationship with you, in my walk with you. Wherever I've been up until right now, I want to start fresh. God, give me the guidance that I need. Give me the strength that I need. Give me the boldness that I need to pursue you daily, to take a step towards you, whether that step is serving, whether that step is reading the Bible, whether that step is praying, whether that step is just saying I want to take the next step. God, I pray that you would be here for us so that we could be there with you. Go ahead and put your hands down. I want to pray for all of us. God, you are an amazing God. 
I thank you for being the light to our path. I thank you for guiding our steps. I thank you that you sent your son to serve us. God, teach us what it means to serve. Help us to step outside of ourself. Help us to know you more, to seek you more. Thank you for today, God, and for your divine direction. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.